Uh, hello. It's Jonathan Charles Fox, uh, Dharma the Wonder Dog, and I did invite her to join me on, on this chair for this little visit, but she smells so horrible, I'm inviting her to get down. And of course she smells so horrible because she went to the groomer just a couple of days ago. We both go to the groomer, clearly, at the same time. That way I'm able to keep track of what I should be doing. Uh, hi, Jonathan Charles Fox, Dharma the Wonder Dog. It's been a while, and uh, I have a couple things to talk about, uh, so I should probably get to it. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, uh, put my soundtrack on which is called motivational event background music. That doesn't sound like a good idea at all, but when I put in instrumental, I got a lot of religious stuff, and even though it looks like I'm uh, living in a church, I'm not. This could work my nerves very quickly. You may not even be able to hear it, and what you might be hearing is thunder, so that's all very exciting, and hello. It's uh, 420, and uh, hi. So I was actually waiting for, oh, already this music is making me crazy. I was waiting for, uh, Laura to come back, little Sheba, but uh, she has not, she has not returned. She's still in her secret location. I have been forbidden to say where she is, uh, but it's nearby and uh, she, yeah, don't go looking for Laura, I'm just saying. Eventually she will show up, but I just couldn't wait uh, because so many things have been happening and I, I, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. There's something I wanted to talk to you about and now I'm not, ugh. Uh, weeks ago, and I didn't do it. Uh, so I'm doing it now because, because I'm doing it now. Uh, so that is, I just, I don't, I hope I didn't talk about it. I didn't look to see if I talked about it. So I could be talking about it again. But the point is, I, uh, I did one of my one man shows. I do, I do do this where I sit down and talk to people. I, that sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, and it was for an organization. Uh, it was a fundraiser for a, a, fana a fantastic organization. Uh, there's no blooper real people uh, called Triversity uh, the Center for Pride uh, which serves the tri-state area all of this sounds really really familiar uh, and creates a safe a safe uh, space for the LGBT QA1 plus community. I'm sure I've said all of these words before, but I did not address this issue. So the thing is, uh, there was uh, what turned out to be a controversial poster for the show that had uh, a picture of me uh, uh, when I was five years old. It's this, I think I show, uh, it sounds like I've shown this to you people before. Uh, it had that picture on it, which was taken uh, a, a thousand years ago. Again, this all sounds really familiar and repetitive. So I won't, uh, I won't, I won't beat this dead horse. Uh, but I know I didn't do this part, which was uh, address the fact that this this uh, image, which was innocent enough to become a greeting card, a greeting card. Uh, this is the opposite side. Oh yeah, see, there was a front and a back. Uh, oh yeah, I think I th mm, a front and a back. Uncle Sid took this uh, photograph at the, um, this is a bathing suit, it says hello, it says goodbye. Oh dear Lord, I probably should have looked at my last video because I think I talked about all of this, but I know I didn't talk about this part, so here we go. So uh, uh, it was innocent enough to have been picked up by the McWright uh, greeting card company. Uh, we ain't right, we're McWright, it says on this. This is an actual greeting card, people. This is a birthday card. You see they have me bending over, my little my little tush bending over saying goodbye. And on the inside it says, uh, and that my friend sums up your youth. It's an actual greeting card you can still buy at gas stations and card stores all across the country because it's so incredibly popular. So popular, in fact, that they made it into uh, beverage napkins, which I thought I had with me and I don't. Even uh, coasters, see, yeah, innocent enough. Uh, to be coasters, so apparently I'm still riled up about that, and you can sense that uh, as we're as we're discussing it right now. So I did the show for a Triversity as a fundraiser, raised money. That's what fundraisers are for, and we auctioned off some of the posters, which you can see here, uh, because there was great controversy, and it's a limited edition collectible item. I don't think there are any left. Uh, I autographed them and uh, we sold them off to the highest bidder. So uh, that was all good. But during the show, I used these cards for my question and answer period. That's what I'm trying to get to in a very roundabout way. Oh, we're at 445. Alexa, set the alarm for nine minutes. 
All right, and that's a long time. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 minutes. That's, that's a lot to ask of you guys. So I, uh, I had a Q&A, as I always do at my one-man shows. Each one is a different theme. They're all um, not really improv, but they're, because they're two stories about my life, but we don't know what we're going to say until we get out there and say it. Uh, but there's a very loose theme to each one. This theme was growing up gay. Not that I know anyone who grew up gay. Not that there's anything wrong with growing up gay. You know, I've met some people who grew up gay, and I told some true stories about uh, growing up gay with really white teeth. Uh, growing up gay with really white teeth. It's no wonder people compare me to David Sedaris. I'm, I'm, I'm just as clever. Uh, so we had, did Q&A, and I did a bunch of them, but not all, and they came back. There's, there's quite a few that I did not get to because I was so busy yammering on about other things. I, I wish this camera angle was better, but then you've got to deal with that light. Oh, isn't that soothing? Can you even hear my beautiful background music? Very soothing. Soothing and annoying, attorneys at law. So I thought I would read some of the questions, but I needed to preface it with all that because they're probably going to have something to do with being gay. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're uh, not into things that have anything to do with being gay, you probably should turn your channel immediately. I don't know what these cards say. I don't know what the questions are because I haven't looked at them. That's half the beauty of what we do here at Camp Fox. So I'm going to read a few, and if they bomb, I have something else I can talk about. So uh, I'm going to just pull out a few at random. Here they are. I haven't read them. And I'm going to read them to you right now. <laughs> I don't understand people at all. What is the grossest thing you've ever experienced? The grossest thing I've ever experienced. I would love to be coming up with something quickly off the top of my head. Uh, I haven't done uh, that many gross things, I, I guess. Grossest thing I've ever done? I don't know, pour, pour salt on snails when I was a kid and watch them melt like the Wicked Witch of the West. That, makes a, that adds a little gay, gay uh, reference to it, right? I, I, don't, I don't tend to do gross things, so there you have it. Uh, on to number two. Let's see what it says. Do you ever buy a t-shirt? Did you ever buy a t-shirt for your boyfriend? Did you ever buy a t-shirt for your boyfriend? This must be somebody who knows me because they know damn well I once bought a t-shirt for a secret boyfriend that said, I'm not gay, but my boyfriend is. So I'm not amused by uh, shills in the audience. Number three, so far it's a bang up job. What is your favorite part of being an entertainer? Specifically, specifically, a gay entertainer. I was unaware that I was a gay entertainer. I mean, I guess I had to put nuts and bolts to it. I, I don't even think of myself as an entertainer. This isn't entertaining, is it? Not, not, not really. Uh, now I have to read the question again, because what is your favorite part of being an entertainer, specifically a gay entertainer? Uh, my favorite part of being, uh, until today, <laughs> my favorite part of doing what I do do when I am doing it, uh, is the Q&A. So that could be going right out the window right about now. But if you have questions that you'd like me to answer in future episodes of Life at Camp Fox or whatever the hell this channel is called, uh, be sure to um, uh, like this page, like, like the page, uh, subscribe to the page, uh, like things, comment, Hit the bell, there's a, I don't know, there's a bell that lets you know when I've done a new video, and as you know, we're all waiting with bated breath for that to happen. So uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do one more card because so far I'm hating, hating this, even though I'll probably uh, post it. One more card, let's see what it says. Dear, dear, what was the silliest thing you had to do as an actor? Uh, back in the day when I was an actor, which was a really long time ago, the silliest thing you had to do as an actor or director. Uh, I haven't directed much. I'd like to direct. Everybody wants to direct. What was the silliest thing I did, ever had to do? Uh, I don't know how, how silly it was. I had to take off all my clothes in front of an audience, and that was, maybe that should have been filed under what was the grossest thing you ever did. I don't know. I did have to take off all my clothes in a show uh, called The Last Sweet Days of Isaac. Uh, that was a, a fantastic show and a great experience. It was a little awkward uh, to do that. Was it silly? I, I don't know. I don't think it comes under the heading of silly. So I suppose I should just uh, uh, scrap this entire thing and unbox something that came from Amazon uh, uh, for another fine episode. A quick one. I only have a minute or two left of... Uh, 
uh, Blackout Shopping with Jonathan Charles Fox and Dartmouth the Wonder Dog. So I got a box. <laughs> you can see what great shape, isn't that great? I got a box at the post office and Maria at the post office and I hope it's okay because it's, it's in pretty rotten shape. But when she gave it to me, uh, I could see that it came all the way from a far, far exotic land uh, with a language that I don't recognize at all. Well, I guess I recognize it. Rhymes with Chinese. Uh, but I don't know what I ordered, so I said I don't know what I ordered. So here it is. We're doing one of those fantastic keeping me hip and young. If I don't throw this right into my heart, I'm going to open the box with it instead. Uh, I don't know what it is. And I didn't go to Amazon to look to see because, you know, blackout shopping is one of my favorite things to do. So I can't even imagine what it is. I'm unboxing it as we speak. It's certainly not the silliest thing I've ever done. It's not the gayest thing I've ever done. It's not the grossest thing I've ever done. I'm just opening a freaking box. And I don't have any idea what this is. What? Do you? Do you know what this is? What the? I don't even know how to. Oh, good Lord. All the way from an exotic land. And it's, it's delicate. So uh, Maria at the post office wasn't wrong to say. Look, look at it. Oh, see, it's a little bent. It is a little bent. I see there's some, some issues with it that I, I can probably straighten out once I figure out what the hell it is. So there's more to it. There's more to it. There's more in the bottom. And in the bottom is this mess. Good Lord. Oh, and look, people, a bag of tools. So not only did I order something that I can't identify, I'm not 100% sure. You know, now I think, uh, see that? That looks like some kind of mashed up uh, fairy. Looks like there's a fairy involved. I don't know what the hell to do with this. It's not... Oh, it's strung to, is it strung together? Is it wired together? I don't know how it's all strung together. I'm not gonna bore you with it. It looks like there are fairies. And I believe I ordered some kind of garden thing during a blackout session uh, months ago, of course, because it came from a far, far away exotic land. This was probably six months ago uh, during the height of COVID. I think this is supposed to be, I think it is supposed to be, it's a representation of a uh, dandelion. And there are little fairies it's hard to tell because they're all mashed up in here and I don't even know how to figure out how to make it come apart. There's tools involved. I said tools. Look, tools. And no instructions. Absolutely no instructions whatsoever. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, people from a faraway land. I, I, if I can put it together without destroying it, that'll be a miracle. But if I do... I guess now I have to go to Amazon and see what I ordered so I can see what it's supposed to look like. I don't know how I, the fairies, I think, attached to this. I don't know, people. I'm afraid to find out how much I, I paid for it. Uh, I, I, I really, I honestly don't know. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's no better searching for this little tiny remote than it is searching for the off button. But I'm just going to turn this off and put you out of uh, your misery. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Jonathan Charles Fox. The uh, uh, aromatic Dharma the Wonder Dog uh, here at uh, Camp Fox. We're indoors today. It's 95 degrees out and thundering uh, yeah. and barking. So uh, have a nice day. I don't know how to turn this off. I'll, uh, I'll bark at you later myself. Oh, she's out on the deck barking at something. Probably a bear. Bye-bye.